there, hello. It's Tuesday, December 1st, and you're listening to the Next Level Podcast, Episode 6. I'm Emmy Bassavant, and with me is the Dynamite Kid, aka John Danho. Boom goes the Dynamite. And the Golden Boy, aka Meher Oppo. Hi, everybody. Enough of that. <laughs> Guys, Thanksgiving happened. Yeah. Turkeys man. were stuffed, mm-hmm. turkeys were eaten, stomachs were grown, enlarged. Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. confirm. I, I can confirm that okay. my stomach has grown and okay. my appetite is like significantly less. Like it's like uh, simply because I ate so much and then now I don't even want to eat that much anymore. Oh so man. Not <laughs> only did I eat so much, I ate the same fucking thing for like four days. Yeah. Because like, they had turkey, made so much leftovers. Food. Yeah. It's funny. My family hates turkey. I'm the only one that likes turkey. So instead of Thanksgiving turkey, we have kebab. Dude, that's amazing. That's great. I would, right? I, I would, I would much, like, I'm so on board. You know what? I would much rather have kebab than turkey, and I'll tell you why. Because generally, at least, it, I don't, I've never had like just an exceptionally good turkey. Turkey's kind of tasteless. It's very tasteless. And not sometimes if it's it, done correctly. Like if people that, say exactly. it's like, oh, it's dry, dry. but it's that's not it. done correctly. But that's why gravy is needed. I don't like gravy. Fuck is wrong with you? Nothing. I don't like what? gravy. I would rather. Dude, that I would my, drink gravy. I would rather Please, that my food have and my meat drank would grapes. be like juicy <laughs> I enough. don't doubt it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Good shit, man. I'm sorry, John. What were you saying? No, no, I was just saying that I would rather my food be juicy enough that I don't need to put too much on it. Like, that's one of my biggest mm. things with chicken, too. Like, sometimes when chicken is done, done badly or just, like, tasteless or whatever, like, not marinated well or what have you, you just want to drench it in ranch or ketchup or what, yeah. or barbecue sauce. And then, okay, cool. Like, you may as well just be drinking the barbecue sauce. Or the ranch or whatever. I don't want gravy. Is it? Okay. Mm. I don't Fair like enough. it. I would yeah. rather have kebab. Oh, man. I would or, always have kebab. Yeah, I love kebab. If kebab given the forever. choice. Chicken or beef? Both. Yeah. I don't I don't discriminate. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. What about you, Mahad? Chicken or beef, what's your favorite? I'm indifferent. Really? I'm yeah. indifferent. Yeah, I like beef better than I like chicken. Sure. But when the chicken is done very well... I will take the chicken without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of a little bit of lemon when they season it in lemon and yeah. some like salt and peppers. So oh, let me dude. see if I have this correct, John. So when good. Ch- when chicken is not done well, you don't <laughs> like it, and then when chicken is done well, you like it. Yes, I feel like that's very important am, am to iterate. I, am, am I correct in <laughs> no. assuming this, John? Yes, you're correct. Have I made the logical jump? Yeah, except that when the chicken is done badly <laughs> or not well, I will still eat it. However, I will just be dipping it in a lot of different sauces. Mm. Oh, man. Whereas if it's like very well done chicken, I refuse to do that because I like the taste of the chicken. Sure. Fair enough. Yeah. Then there's the same thing with turkey, basically, for me. Yeah. yeah. That's why I prefer kebab. You can't really fuck up kebab. Uh, you, yeah, kebab? sure you can. I've never really had too bad of an experience. Okay. Well, you know what matters when it comes to kebab? What beer you're having with it. Oh, <laughs> Is yes. that so? It is. It is. All right. So what have I brought today, gentlemen? Oh, boy. You tell us. You tell us, man. What am I holding in my hand? This is this goblet. <laughs> so this is Kotai Gold, All right, I which, remember, is, which yeah. is a beer straight from Armenia. All right. I remember we spoke about this, actually. Yes. In a past podcast, I had mentioned how I think Gilikya, another Armenian beer, is shit. And I just shit talked a lot. And I said that yep. Gotai Gold is my favorite. So I went ahead and brought it to see if you guys will enjoy it. So you guys want to take a swig? Yeah, yeah man. First swig. Cheers, guys. Yeah, I like it. That's all right. I like it. It's very light, very fluffy. That's the fluffy. word. I, yeah, it's fluffy. That. That's a good word. <laughs> yeah, it's a very fluffy tasting beer. I like it a lot. Mm. Kotai Gold. Um, this is the first uh, I okay so our friend Avo Kamurian basically swears up and down that I had Armenian beer with him in Armenia but I don't recall at all like I have no <laughs> recollection of this event mostly probably because I was drunk on vodka yeah so I don't remember if I was having Armenian beer but as for my collected memories this is the first Armenian beer I'm having and it's a very good impression of it so well congratulations yeah, yeah man. man thanks man thanks for bringing this this, no. is, this is excellent of course they were the last three beers in the market <laughs> <laughs> I mean Wait, this kind of beer of which course. market <laughs> remedy liquor on Glen Oaks Boulevard <laughs> sounds good dude remedy I went up to the guy <laughs> what and are you I'm, gonna remedy man <laughs> <laughs> I don't know man it's actually funny the, they have remedy drugs and liquor and okay. one side is just remedy drugs yeah. in large words. And large the other words, side is sorry. liquor? Yeah, the other side is liquor. It's, I like this. It's kind of dumb. This bottle is very big, very interesting to hold. And it just spells out Kotaik on the side. And in the middle of the O of Kotaik, there's like a depiction of a king's head. 
Do you guys notice that? Or a prince? I don't know. Probably. I had oh. never noticed that. That's pretty cool. With a crown and he has long hair and he has the aquiline nose that we're all known for as a culture. So So I went inside Remedy Liquor and asked them, can I, do you guys have Kotai Gold? And the guy looked at me like, what the fuck are you asking that for? <laughs> <laughs> who, who comes in here asking for this? And who? But who wouldn't? I mean, if you want to, if you want an Armenian beer, why wouldn't you go to that specific place? Yeah, you go to like an a, Armenian market. Yeah. It's not Why, like I'm gonna go to Ralph. Was he really that flabbergasted? Dude, yeah, I mean, how many of these do you think they fucking import, like, a uh, month? Yeah, you're right. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> like, who's going out looking for this shit? But then again, if Other than dumb hipsters like us, you yeah. know? Well, <laughs> if they're importing it, like, by month or however long they're importing it, and there were three left, that means that some people did buy it. Right? Some people eventually, like... Oh, no, no, no. You, you misunderstand, John. Oh, maybe I do. <laughs> the refrigerator, the place where he took the, these beers out of, there were only three slots in that row. Oh, how funny. So they only kept three of these. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so just enough for us. Yeah. Just cool. enough for the boys at the next level, man. Yeah. That is some pretty they next know. level shit. Good, yeah, <laughs> good is, for remedy. Is. They're they're remedying my, they're remedying my the uh, alcoholism, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's got a kind of like a, a little spunky aftertaste, actually. It does. Maybe that's because of the age. I don't know. Honestly, I was just thinking that mm. it may just be like me romanticizing the beer I've had in Armenia, but this kind of tastes different from the one there. It, Dude, it, it has to. It traveled all the way here. And how long has it been around in that fridge? Who knows? That's a good point. So yeah. it'll it'll taste different, but I, I don't think it tastes bad at all. So I don't know. But Meher, you were telling me earlier, or, you were telling me earlier that you can read Armenian. And I cannot. So I would like you to at least read the top, like the here, right here, where it's right, right under the Kotai gold, that sentence or three words. Well, it's very small. Let me give it a try. Patskwini, Bastarets, Basteratsvads, Arans, Konservatneri. Okay, wait, hold on. What does that mean? Uh... My I Armenian have no is idea what you don't know? is, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I don't mean the small letters. I mean the like this bet like it's kind of It big. just says bright colored without I think it means without like preservatives or something. Oh, okay. Right. That's probably I, what I that heard means. the word conservative. No, it's cons <laughs> conservantner. Oh, okay, yeah, that's not even close. It sounds like conservative, but yeah, yeah I'm not I'm not about to guess what yeah. that means. Dude, I went to Armenian something. school. Or, like, not Armenian school. I went to a Saturday school, like, for to learn Armenian for a good, like, five years of my life. And I just don't remember too much of it. I don't know how to read or write. Mm. I can speak fairly fluently and I understand it well, but not most dialects. I understand my specific dialect very yeah. well. And the rest of it is almost like falling on deaf ears, like a different language sometimes. That's funny. Like, uh, I feel like I'm one of the only people that I have no problem un understanding the different dialects. Maybe because, like, I, I went to a school that kind of taught both. So yeah. Yeah, that's fair. To be fair, this dialect that I was reading is not. I mean, it's it's just different. Yeah, you know, it's written yeah. in in the way that it's written in Armenia, which you is know? not. The, I mean, we have like three prevalent dialects, and this is this is the one found in Armenia. You know, yeah. you know what, dude? I would say <clears throat> the the dialect prevalently found in Armenia, even though it's foreign to me, is probably my favorite because hmm. it sounds the best to my ears as like someone who doesn't understand it that well. Sure. Whereas like mine. My dialect, which is like the gor, like I add the gor, like inchkenes gor, instead sure. of inches anum, it's very like uh, dirty. Like the gor <laughs> is like a dirty thing. A dirty the gor addition. should just not, is it's a wrong thing. Yeah. You should uh, but, just scratch but, it whenever you find yourself using I, it. I barely speak Ar Ar Armenian to anybody anymore. That's funny. Yeah. Like, actually, that kind of dialect is the most pleasant to me. It's like, it's the nicest really? to listen yeah, to. Yeah, I've heard yeah, that too. It just flows too. really well. Interesting. No, I, I like I like the Hayastansi dialect a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the Persian dialect is very sing song -y. All right. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. I baba in chasen. Well, I'm glad right. you guys like this. Uh, yeah, you guys I like really it. love this, man. I wish there were more, honestly. Like, I wish this wasn't almost extinct in our in our little <laughs> diasporan community. Well, I mean, there's a lot of other Armenians beer we could try out. So, we'll see. Yeah, that is true. Wait, okay, so there's Kilikya. There's which Kilikya, you don't like at all, Mahed. Yeah. Which but, we have to try. And then there's Gyumri, which I've heard it's even worse. Yeah, so like, uh, and then there's really Erebuni, and then there's Erebuni, which is pretty good, and then this is oh, the okay. best one. I've heard Ararat came out with a new one. I don't know anything about that. I don't know either, but huh. I heard, yeah. Don't they do primarily whiskey or vodka? No, they do vodka. It's a brandy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, oh, it is. It's a yeah. brandy? Yeah. It's like, gotcha. a, it's like apricot? Cognac. Brandy? Oh, it's a cognac. I've never had it. Okay. I, I think. 
Is oh, it like I mean, I, I'm, <laughs> I don't, I don't remember the last time I've had it. Well, probably maybe, a long time maybe ago. we need to, maybe we need to expand, boys. Maybe we need to move from yeah, beer to like different kind of. Try some, kinda, try yeah, some other stuff. Yeah, let's try some other shit. Like in a yeah, in the coming weeks, some like have down. a few shots before our podcast and during and, and after during, and <laughs> after, and then we can so, have a post podcast. Sounds knows? good. <laughs> At least the beer is cold. You know, not as cold as a blizzard. Oh, oh. <laughs> talking about blizzard. <laughs> Oh, Blizzard. So uh, we have a little bit of a special episode today. Um, we're talking about Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, we're going to be talking about their library of games, their past games, their present games, and uh, we're going to speculate a little bit about what's going to come next. And I guess just talk a little bit about their philosophy as a game company and kind of how they've shifted because they have gone through a bit of a, a bit of a shift recently. Mm-hmm. They so, have. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's safe to say that we're all Blizzard fans, or yeah. at least have played some of their big oh, games. Oh man, no, you you know what it is for me when it comes to Blizzard? It's like I, f- I find it hard to be like a fanboy for Blizzard. But when I think of Blizzard, I just have it's like a respect almost. Yeah, you know, it's like I have I have the utmost respect sure. for Blizzard. Yeah, you know what they they nailed. They nailed getting their games to appeal to the demographics they want so well. That I feel like other companies don't do that. Like other companies try to get different demographics and different stuff like that. But and some succeed, some fail, whatever you want to say. But Blizzard has always succeeded in getting who they want to play their games. Yeah. Whether or not that's a broad spectrum of people or a small spectrum of people, they always are right on the money with who they attract. Hmm. And I I think that's like Maher said, that's a very like respectworthy quality it is. in a company. And yeah. I, and that's definitely true. But it's also important to note that. World of Warcraft. Oh yeah, brought in a lot of people. It brought in a ton of people yeah. from different backgrounds, yeah. many different backgrounds. Way different background. I have so many friends who played that game, who that still do, you, who that still do here yeah. and there, but also who you would have never found getting caught dead playing games. Hmm. And World of Warcraft just attracted them yeah. for whatever reason. Like in high school, it was almost like a currency. Like. Like, hey, dude, like I fa- like I have a free copy of WoW. I've, I've been in this exact situation where someone was like, I have a free copy of WoW in my backpack, but I want to sell it. Would you do you want to buy it for like 20 bucks with the account? And, you know, like it was yeah. it's very interesting. Like it was kind of like it was so coveted. It was mm-hmm. a very coveted experience. For I remember a lot of people. I remember uh, we we shared an account, my brother and I, with mm-hmm. our friends who lived in Armenia. I shared that same exact account with you guys, <laughs> and I kept getting booted off. Yeah, the, uh, the Papazians, some yeah. friends of ours. And it's funny because there's a 12-hour time difference. So, like, 12 a.m. <laughs> is, like, 12 p.m. So, there would definitely be some overlap sometimes. Sure. Like, my brother would log on, and then I'd get, like, an angry message. Like, dude, get <laughs> off of our server, you dick. And then we just have to work it That's out. That's too funny. I didn't, I, I, I didn't know them at the time time obviously but it was very funny because me and them would get into wars of like logging in and logging out and stuff like that <laughs> and i try to like be the stubborn one because i really wanted to play even though it wasn't my account at all yeah but shahan just lended it to me he just gave it to me your brother just gave it to me Mahad, and just said hey you could play but my he said my cousins in armenia play it too and you'll just have to split it with them I'm like, his okay. cousins huh? Yeah. <laughs> but dude I, actually i have somewhat of a melancholy memory to share about it, but also like a very nice one, I guess, like a uh, about World of Warcraft in particular. Shoot. Is it came out, I, I think, around the holiday season of 2004. Mm-hmm. And I I was in physics at the time. I was in ninth grade. I was in physics at the time with a with a teacher named Mr. Henderson at oh, Clark. Man. Yeah. And, that, and he was a big MMO player. Like he played EverQuest. He played different games on his computer with his family, with his friends, with other teachers in the school itself. And, um, I remember that year he was very excited because he, we were taking a test and he just stopped the test in the middle of us taking it or not stop, but like he announced he's, he just got up off his desk. He put both his hands on the table. He stood up and he just announced to the class world of Warcraft has arrived in the middle of the class <laughs> as we were taking this test. And he's like, they're installing it in my house right now. <laughs> blah, blah. But the, the sad part is, is that he was like, he got sick. I don't know. I don't know the details of his illness. Yeah. Uh, but after that day, actually, we saw less and less of him and eventually he just stopped coming to class and he had passed. Oh, that's and, terrible. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's terrible. He was a great teacher. Did you guys too. share this teacher? Yeah. Oh, you I had Henderson too. as well? I don't think we were in the same class, but yeah, yeah. I did have him. Yeah, he was, sorry he was to hear a great that. teacher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. Uh, but this is the interesting thing is that my first character in World of Warcraft was on my friend Rx account and uh, I made my first character a gnome. A gnome... 
mage, I think, named Henderson. <laughs> and I played him to like level seven. And I mean, I stopped because it wasn't my account, but that's it's like, it's always, I, I don't know why, but it's always something I'll remember like in a, in a weird melancholic, but also like in, I don't know, like happy kind of way in a weird, happy kind of way. I guess yeah. like it's a gaming memory. So I don't know. Sure. I, 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 yeah. You immortalized him for a little bit. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way of putting it. I like that. And I'd just like to announce a really cool statistic about World of Warcraft, which just puts in perspective, <laughs> just puts in perspective how, how incredible that game announce was. Announce it, dude. I mean, it's, 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 it's not like a, like something that you can't find without, <laughs> within five <laughs> seconds of Googling it. Are you sure, dude? Are yeah. You yeah. Sure? <laughs> anyway, you know how at the height of World of Warcraft, they had what? Like 17 million subscribers or more? Around that, yeah. Yeah, like 15, 17 million, like between 15 and 20. Okay. So now... 12 years later, there are 5 million subscribers left. Yeah. yeah. And with 5 million subscribers, having lost 10 million subscribers because, you know, the game is like starting to get old and dated or whatever, yeah. they are still the number one MMO in, in yeah. the entire world. That's because and by MMOs, a large margin. Yeah. yeah. That's because MMOs aren't really a thing anymore. You, you know, know like no, no one really plays them anymore. You, you say that? However, there are a lot of MMOs that are going towards console that are doing very well. Like, so Final Fantasy hmm. 14 is doing exceptionally well with their numbers, with the content they're bringing out and everything. So it's 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 kind of not a resurging market, but it's a market that is not dead yet, okay. I will say. And WoW is definitely not the killer. It's not. Hmm. I, I firmly believe that, that WoW is not the killer, but it did st stagnate the genre, I think. Yeah. Not that I played MMOs before. I can't really talk too yeah. much. But I did try a lot of MMOs, but I always end up coming back to WoW, man. Are I'm you still playing? No, not really. Yeah. Um, I still get the expansions when they come out just because I kind of feel obligated to. Just because I've already... I've played every single expansion. <laughs> just so. give him yeah. Blizzard your yeah. money? Yeah. <laughs> ah, just whatever. You know, yeah. it's... I appreciate what they do. Yeah, so. okay, fair enough. Well, yeah. speaking of non-MMO games, I just have to... I'm just itching to shout out give a shout out to a game which is probably i think my favorite game warcraft 3 frozen throne sure mm -hmm. okay and i mean was that I, your first diablo or no, was that your first blizzard game yes it yes it was, was frozen throne yes okay interesting what was yours john diablo well, let's get this out of the way real quick diablo <laughs> yeah it was diablo 2 okay mine was yeah. starcraft oh okay, oh, okay. that's yeah, pretty cool yeah so i mean the reason why i love frozen throne so much is because I was just telling you guys earlier, they they gave the tools to the users to create games, you know? And yeah, not, like and, custom modes, yeah. And not just shitty games, but they really gave people the tools to make fantastic side games, you know? It was it was a hub of creativity, I think. I, I'll agree with you to some extent, but disagree to that bit that you said they were like amazing tools. They were pretty limited tools. I mean, dude, how limited were they? They made some. I they made games that later became genres. Yeah. yeah. Do, do do you see what I mean? No, no, like right. they made yeah. they made the MOBA, like Dota. Dota two came from Frozen Throne. Yeah. The tools that see, Frozen Throne allowed to make. But see, it's very interesting because now in the market you have so many other MOBAs. You have Dota two, League of Legends, Heroes of the Storm, stuff like that, and they all diverge, and they all diverge except for Dota two. Dota two is very similar to Dota one in a lot of ways. And that's a huge criticism against it because the way I think that that's it, foolish. I, I they're very archaic. There's a lot of things that are super archaic, like the turn speed and stuff like that. Like that were limitations in Dota or in in the Warcraft engine made it into Dota two. And yeah, there are features now, but it's like there are certain things I suppose I would do without now. And that's what I mean by limited. But then that Not would that change they, the game. Yeah, you know? it like would he, change the game. You're right. I, that to me yeah. seems like nitpicking, John. I'm yeah, sorry, but that I'm, truly seems like nitpicking to me. Yeah, you don't have to be sorry, dude. I, I'm a nitpicker. <laughs> <laughs> I nitpick all the time. With it. Even when I enjoy things. I enjoy Dota 2, but no, I nitpick. Because it wasn't only Dota 2, man. It was it was other stuff. It was like tower defense. You know? Do you yeah, remember? Enfos. Yeah, Enfos. Yeah, and, and, well, Enfos. Was Enfos was when you, you choose a hero, okay? Yeah. And you and your friends are like three, four people. And then from two sides, just like, they're just waves of minions. Oh, sure. And you have to, okay. like, you level up. That's right. You that's customize right, that's right. very things. fun, dude. It, it was a very fun mode. And I remember Aureg figured out a way to glitch it. So yeah, you could pick two heroes at the same time. Oh fuck that! Yeah, <laughs> no, he he figured out that way to do that and, and like micromanage it, them. Yeah, and you have to micromanage them, but you get double the 
like you get an extra member of your team to spawn shit for the enemies. Oh man. That's 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 absolutely crazy legit. Like he figured that out. I remember being in the room watching him. Cool. <laughs> you have to pick it like at the last second and like this weird shit. I uh, So uh, when you said micromanaging, it just uh, I kind of had to I have to divert again because it just made me think of StarCraft. Oh man. Which you said was your first game, I mean. Yeah, man. I remember going to my cousin's house like I was a kid watching him play StarCraft. I didn't really know what was going on, but um and then I noticed like a little text chat at the bottom and said GG. I'm like, oh, what's that? Like, I was curious. Like, I didn't know what that was. And then he told told me about like etiquette, like gaming etiquette. It's like, Little oh, yeah, did that we means know. good game. Little yeah. did we know that GG would become the right? main, like, uh, you know, shit piece. talk. Yeah, main shit talk. Main, yeah. Like, literally, like a defining aspect of our nomenclature as friends. It's like become <laughs> a part of our vocabulary. Like, just saying, like, dude, that was a GG meal. That was, you know, like, just, oh, God. Yeah. Little did we know, dude, back then. That game was all about micromanagement. Yeah. Was it not? Oh yeah, no. I sucked at it. I yeah. suck at it now, and I sucked at it then. And yeah. I suck at it too. But correct me if I'm wrong. It's one of the few games I think that you know a single second wasted in the I don't know how long the matches are, like 20 minutes long, 15, 20 minutes, like right. however soccer. long they need yeah. to be. Yeah, every second counts. Oh no, for sure. In that game, yeah. it is. It is. You just, have to be efficient. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is the definition of like a micromanagement game, yeah. you know, like a game that focuses on being good at micromanagement. Someone, um, uh, I read this somewhere. Someone explained StarCraft as real-time chess. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. I think I, there's some truth to I that. I suppose I can see that, yeah. 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 I, I liked, or I like StarCraft, I suppose, but I'm, I like watching it. I like hearing about it. I like seeing it uh, uh, played by my friends, too, or yeah. by pros, or what, what have you. But... I just suck. Man. That game is tough, man. I'm like, awful it at takes it. a lot of time to. Anytime I've it. tried to play that game, it's the same yeah. thing that people say. You got rushed, right? Or like you just get beaten. You got Zerg. Very you got Zerg. Zerg. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you don't know how to defend it, you just get crushed. Yeah, that's how Pe- it is. People can and it discourages your, people. Yeah, people can exploit the fact that you're new, like that, like a snap of their fingers. That's, like they'll know. That's my criticism for that game, and it's not even a criticism because it's just what the game is. It you just know? has a high skill ceiling. Super you know? like high you learning gotta, curve. You have to learn it, and once yeah. you do learn it, it's a very satisfying game to play. Yeah. Like, uh, funnily enough, I went to the midnight release of StarCraft Two. I bought it. Oh, cool. Yeah. This this was random because I never really like would think to play uh, StarCraft or other RTS games that fervently, but I bought StarCraft Two with Oreg, Hike, and Hike's cousin, and um we were just playing 4v4s which i think was a mode at that time i don't know if it still is mm-hmm. and i was literally the resource bitch i would just amass resources constantly and give them all to our egg <laughs> <laughs> and i would hope and we would win a lot because you know out of four people what are the chances i'm gonna get rushed my base is gonna get rushed that's right? true and if they did rush me then yeah i mean it sucked we usually lost those games but i'd say 50 percent of the time it was just a crapshoot I would just be giving resources to Oreg, who was the most skilled out of all of us, and he would just straight up wreck. He would just straight up wreck all four people with with Hike and, and Hike's cousin's nice. help. It yeah, was because he has like double the resources. He has double, straight up double. Because if there was one thing I was good at, it was literally clicking. <laughs> and that's it. But I'm not. I'm not good at clicking with any reason. I'm good at clicking just to get resources, and that's right it. <laughs> and that that's my skill set in StarCraft, <laughs> one and two. So yeah, moving on. I mean. They had those RTSs. They had StarCraft. They made the Warcrafts, uh, the MMO, you know. And then there comes Diablo. Diablo yeah. 2. It was my first game, yeah. Hack yeah. and Slash. That was a defining game. Hmm. It, 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 may, it was... Was it the first ever game, game like similar that? Like, to that type of style? Like an ARPG, like an action RPG? I don't know if it was the first, but definitely it was the one that popularized yeah. it. Yeah. It was the one that said, hey, look, like this is a valid way of playing a game. And That's funny, man. It's actually, I never played Diablo 1 or Diablo 2. I played 2. I was awful at that as well. Like, I didn't understand the point of that game at the time. As like, because the genre was new. It's looting. It's looting. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't understand that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's what's I thought it was leveling up was the point. I, I'm pretty sure they created the infatuation with looting. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. They're, they're the game that did that. Because and you see that in all the rest of their games. Yeah. Or I mean, like, they're, they're you yeah. know, like, uh, wow, mainly, <laughs> I guess. But because, dude, yeah. I mean, they made so many, they had so many different variations of, like, weapons and just armor. 
whatever you can and find you could in that sock game. It, you could sock it different uh, things with like gems or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. And it was super cool because one of the best things about Diablo 2, and I didn't even play it that much, but I just know a lot about it, is that it uh, it was multiplayer. Like they had the multiplayer aspect yeah. of it. That's so you right. could, it, yeah. was, well, that, it was like PvP sort of thing, right? Like you would fight against only, other people. No, or it's like Diablo you, like, 3, man. It's like oh, yeah, you could right, go yeah. in the whole you campaign party up with someone else. You could just go dungeon with people. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was, I didn't do that simply because, as I said, like, I didn't understand that game. Like, I didn't understand the point of an ARPG, not because of anything that was Blizzard's fault. Yeah. Simply because I was too young to really understand what was going on. Like, my friend was like, I'm grinding, like, I'm level 90 or 99 or whatever, and I'm going through all these different, like, things, getting all this gear. I'm doing, my magic find is like 7%, all this stuff. And I was excited to get from level 23 to 24. Like that was my <laughs> sure. milestone. You know, like I didn't get it. I was like, I don't even know how old I was like a young, very young teenager. So, you know, like I love Diablo two and I actually did like Diablo three a decent bit. Not yeah. that I've touched it in a while, but I did like it. So yeah, yeah. it's been getting better, man. Diablo three has only been getting better. Like they keep like, yes, I agree. Upgrading it and like changing. Stuff I never up played and, it when it was "quote unquote" bad. Yeah. I only played it when it had gotten. As wasn't you said, wasn't one of the main reasons why people shat on that game because they made it that you had to log in online to play a non that was, online that, game. That was one reason. Yeah, <laughs> I remember yeah, that, that was, being a big a big. Yeah, that wasn't like the biggest in reason. a game. No, dude, like in a game like Diablo, that like everyone wants to play it. You know, like the first week was fucked because you couldn't play the game. Yeah, yeah. like you can't play a single player game. Yeah, no, but did, didn't they because have the, the multiplayer aspect as well? And no, yeah, no, yes. no, they absolutely did. But, but you had to be connected to the servers to play. Okay, so yeah, the, the, that's the, foolish. The idea was, let's say you're on your own and you're playing, right? And even though you, it's a multiplayer game primarily, you just want to play it on your own. The game did not allow you to do that. The game made you connect online and made you be to their network of Battle.net and etc. And that was the main criticism because on the first like few days at least, mm-hmm. if not the whole week, if not more than that, it was just a clusterfuck. Yeah. Dude. Errors everywhere, getting booted and stuff like that. Hmm. I And I had a roommate at the time who was just, he locked himself in his room to play this. And I don't know how he got in, but he was telling me none of his friends were able to really connect or ever play with him. Hmm. So I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if Bethesda's... Ugh, Wow. If Blizzard's... <laughs> ha, I'm the... Oh, my mind's elsewhere, I guess. If Blizzard's other titles have faced similar, like, uh, connection problems to Diablo 3 at launch. But, yeah, Diablo 3 was just a train wreck at first, man. Mm. And not only because of that, because of the auction house. Yeah, they had the real money auction house. What's the deal with the auction house? Basically, you can put... As you loot, you can pick up stuff and you can put it onto an auction house mm-hmm. that you can put actual US dollar, um, like, money onto it. So... You know, if I find some necklace, I could put it up on sale for five bucks. Oh, you decide the price. Yeah. Oh, that's fucked up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I actually mean, know a friend that made 200 bucks yeah. out of like selling like some sword. Yeah. I the, mean, that's that's really great. Yeah. The fucked up thing He's probably fucked up though. No. The, fucked <laughs> up, the, the messed up part about it isn't that you could set your own price. It's that the game's looting had become a game of money. Yeah. Instead of grinding. And the point of Diablo 2 was ah, grinding. Ah, I see. So why, like, why would I grind and grind and grind when I could pay ten dollars to get the same item I would have after after like ten okay. hours? No, that's 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 the worst thing I've yeah. heard about. Yeah. But they got that's rid terrible. of it, bro. They got rid of the well, auction that's house smart completely. Of them. That's yeah. smart of Within them. Within a year, I think. Like they, they very fi- very quickly, they, they got fired rid of it. the designer of it. Oh, Jay no Wilson. Shit. Yeah, he got he was under a lot of flack and he got either fired or re- or moved to another project mm. and he just left like the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, and they changed it after that, which was a godsend, dude. Yeah, it made that game way better with Reaper of Souls, the expansion, way better. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and take a little break, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back, and we're still in the blizzard. <laughs> still, mm. still a little cold, mm. a bit chilly. So, before the break, we were talking about kind of the criticisms leveled against Diablo three, and that got me thinking about just the general trend in Blizzard games. Well, I guess over the past, let's say three, four years. Yeah. Uh, even their expansions for WoW included, 
And so I just want to get your guys' take like on how you feel their philosophy and design has changed from the beginning till now and like where you see their games in general, like their recent games. Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing that actually they did a bit different that kind of popped out at me. So StarCraft 2, they just had their last expansion that came out like less than a month ago, right, Legacy yeah? of the Void. And um, I don't, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, but they wrapped up the story. StarCraft 2 ended. They gave a definitive ending. And it's a certain way that there can't be a StarCraft 3. Like, story-wise, they can't add on to it with another expansion. And I think that's because StarCraft, that's kind of their hardcore game. And they're sort of phasing it out. And they have been doing it for quite a while. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, thanks for that. I mean, to answer your question, John, uh, and plays into what Emin was saying, I think that the direction they're going in nowadays is just kind of streamlining things, you know, yeah, okay. making making things kind of easier to digest than they had in the past, which per, l explains what Emin was just saying right now. Yeah. So then let me ask you guys a question. So you guys already know my stance and people who have listened to the podcast know my stance on Hearthstone specifically on their absolutely asinine business method <laughs> just to make people want to pay, right? So, sure. and you were saying, basically, you both were saying that they want to phase out the more hardcore content towards more streamlined content. So why did they wait three expansions, not three expansions, even three separate iterations of Starcraft two to do it because they wanted money or because that was the correct format? See, now I haven't played Starcraft two in the story mode or, or in any way I said before that I played it a bit, but I didn't play it to the extent that I cared about it at all yeah so what about the three um three iterations of it made it made it worthwhile that's my question i think i mean could best answer that mm. i think it's not about like the iterations like it's, it's not that the story is coming to an end it's like they're noticing a trend that rts isn't really a thing anymore and um basically i don't think they think they can make money out of it anymore fair enough so they're kind of abandoning it because they have been doing that like for the esports thing like starcraft used to be big starcraft used to be the king of esports yes like brood war yeah. um even starcraft 2 when that first came out like that was pretty big and, and now it's dead now, on esports starcraft 2 is still played fairly competitively yeah now. but like not so much anymore like it's it's well, yeah. there is a shift towards mobas and yeah. you know what hearthstone is fucking huge hearthstone hmm. is not a small thing like hearthstone or heroes of the storm both, but yeah, uh, Hearthstone oh. especially. Gotcha, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think they're kind of like diverting their resources a little bit. Okay. And saying that, you know what? Like maybe a StarCraft 3 wouldn't be the best option. So then my follow-up question to that would be, do you think that they planned for that from the get-go? Because your logic would indicate to me that no, they didn't and they shifted no, they it midway didn't. through. Yeah. I think it's just uh, like a philosophical change yeah. like it's just the result of the philosophical change it's just that because like taking. starcraft like they are going towards a more casual audience they're going for kind of they're trying to appeal to everyone and you know what starcraft does not appeal to everyone no, starcraft, it does not like, at all. it's a very lonely game that you have to you know like proper starcraft is played one versus one you know um i understand yeah that yeah, makes it's total very sense. intense it's, it has like a steep learning curve and if you're playing starcraft right now like you're going up against you know like pros people who still play yeah. starcraft are are good so Mahad, you would say that this de design philosophy or the change in their philosophy carries towards their other games yeah i i think it does and i also th and granted i don't know too much about this next game i'm going to mention but it does play into uh what i was saying earlier they're making an fps yes which is overwatch overwatch the new game that they're making yeah so I mean, it was just saying that they're trying to appeal to more and more people. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, just the fact that they're making an FPS. You know, if, if someone told me that Blizzard back in the day when I was playing Frozen Throne wouldn't be making an FPS, like in that time, if someone told me next year they're going to be making an FPS, I would have been like, what the hell are you talking Dude, about? what about StarCraft Ghost? You guys heard about that? Yep. They're can it's their canceled project. It was going to mm -hmm. be an FPS or a third-person shooter. It was a third-person shooter. Really? Yeah. 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 So it was there's canceled. Like some, but there's some it. But see, mm -hmm. there's an interesting thing about Overwatch is that uh, it was basically the remnants of their Project Titan code, right? 
Yep. So so basically, that would have been an action uh, component. It was the action component mm-hmm. from Titan. Yeah. And Titan was a their next MMO. Yeah. And oh. I think they noticed the trend going away. Like people don't really play MMOs anymore. Like not as much as they used to. What do people play? And what ap- appeals to a lot of people? Like shooting. You know, like first person shooters. Let me just point out the irony in the fact that the kings of the MMO market said not a lot of people play MMOs anymore. Let's can this project. Right. Like they couldn't even kill their own beast you know what i mean like and like it's funny too like once if you look at overthrow you can sort of tell that it had like mmo things in mind because what well you played the beta right i mean i played the beta overthrow overwatch overwatch what did i say overthrow Overthrow. (laughs) (laughs) dota leaking in yeah um but yeah no in overwatch there is there are three four uh different categories of uh characters and three of them are tank healer dps hmm. you have like the holy trinity right. and like it really does if you think about it that this was like the action part of an mmo it makes sense all right so i see where people without knowing and too much about the game would jump to the conclusion that it's just like uh team fortress yeah because you were just you just said that there's a tank you know there's that holy trinity yeah. and i just it thought looked, to myself yeah. what, what other fps has that that's pretty unique you know not many fps's have mm-hmm. like defined roles like that but then i guess team fortress does so here's my question uh to either of you You, more you i mean because you know Mm -hmm. most about it what would you say separates from the little you've played overwatch from a game like team fortress 2 well like team fortress 2 it's class based right yeah so you have like nine different classes that you could play and um but in overwatch there's like 20 some different characters and the certain characters, like, they counter each other. And certain characters, they work with each other. It is uh, it is different. So is there, like, a draft in the beginning? Like, do you that's draft your characters That's the thing, interesting or? thing about it. So, like, yeah, you choose your characters at the beginning. And when you die, you can choose a different character mid-game. Like, oh, you're not... Okay. You, you're not confined to any certain thing. No, I kind of like switch. that. Yeah, I like that a lot too. Just because like if the other team has, you know, a bit of a tanky team and you need, you know, like more DPS to like break yeah, through it, their Yeah, it makes lines. room for improvisation. Yeah. Okay, dude. So, oh, wow. This is actually, I, I did not know that at mm-hmm. all. Okay. And that's super interesting. That's actually very cool. Yeah. But that brings to mind exactly what we we're talking about, right? So that brings in to mind in my, in my mind streamline versus hardcore right yeah so this is obviously a very streamlined sort of experience yep. that you could just switch on the go and stuff like that yep. however in my opinion to be some sort of competitive game you need to have some hardcore elements and to switch in the middle of a game your so entire I guess the thing, character like, they haven't really talked about their competitive side of it i haven't seen any competitive matches you right? think like, it will exist need- or do you think the game will ship as is from the beta with a little more extra fluff uh well i mean from what was in the beta it was very stripped down it was just one mode and like quick play that's all um i guarantee there's going to be more stuff that they're going to add in yeah of Um, course but i mean is it going to fundamentally the competitive side of it or i i really hope so like i really hope for the competitive if they're going to push for like a competitive mode they definitely should um okay whether it's going to be like you can change mid-game i don't know but i don't but that would be that would be interesting but doesn't that make sense that it it I mean maybe it would be interesting but doesn't it make sense that to change in the middle of the game would lead you to believe that it's not going to be competitive? Like that seems to me like a very I don't know it, I don't think necessarily like a team versus a team and then part of your team can just change completely like yeah but it that, might that be gives fun to watch the opportunity but for the other team to improvise and say it's like oh shit like they're changing these characters around we should change our guys too it becomes kind of like a push and pull trying to so either you know, this is going to be non-competitive at all <laughs> or it's going to be a new era of competitive yeah. is what you're basically saying to me hmm. that's how i understand it i guess i mean i don't know if it has to be either extreme it could it could just be a, a competitive like the meta can be created and people can understand like yeah. what to do in certain situations and it could just be like a regular competitive game how can you create a meta on things that could constantly change in the middle of the game I mean, meta in the sense that people will start to realize what changes fit best for certain scenarios. Like patterns? And and if there are, yeah, I mean, if there are 20 different characters, then that leaves room for a lot of, a lot of different combinations, you know? Yeah. Fair enough. I guess we don't know enough 
from Blizzard themselves mm-hmm. about what they're going to put into the game. I think it just seems like heresy to us as people who have played Dota for, yeah, for, no, for that's something exact, like that to right? happen. That's exactly what I'm comparing it to. Yeah, so yeah I, I, knew, was, I knew that. If I was able to switch in Dota from like Wraith King to Timbersaw in the middle yeah. of my game because I died. Yeah, but the, the idea is that you're, you're, <laughs> it would be dumb if you were gaining levels. And then could switch to a character that has an yeah. equal level, but there is none of that shit. No, I'm guessing, yeah, right? there's no like in-game progression. Like you don't unlock different weapons. Like, no, did you choose someone, has. and then if it works, you win. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, that sounds cool to me. Yeah. That, that I guess, really does. I guess I'm gonna remain skeptical. It remains to be seen if this is gonna be a competitive game. If they don't intend it for competitive and they just want people to have fun because it's yeah. just a fun, different kind of game yeah. or um, an alternative to Team Fortress or to other FPS games. Yeah. All the power to them, dude. Like Blizzard, I um, haven't played the beta, but I can just tell you right now, regardless of your criticism, they just nailed whatever they they wanted. Really, yeah. I'm and sure. You know what, man? Like it is. It really is a lot of fun. Like they they have some very interesting characters. Like um, there's one guy that basically has Pudge's hook. That's cool. Yeah, you pull <laughs> people towards you and you shotgun them. There's Get people over that here. can like climb on walls. There's people <laughs> that can fly. It's 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 fun. Sounds like chaos. Yeah, it can be. <laughs> but you know, chaos is fun in a lot of games. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind it, I suppose. So speaking of Dota, um, how about Heroes of the Storm? Yeah. That's okay. their that's their MOBA. So, I mean, I got this. Uh, man. To me, MOBAs are a very sensitive topic, okay? <laughs> so I've, I've played, <laughs> Tell for me people why. who don't know, I've played, I think, 2,000 or more hours of Dota 2. Yep, I have it on my Steam logged. But I, but if someone asked me, "Do you like Dota 2? (laughs) I can never give them a straight answer because to like that kind of game or to not like it is way too simplified. It's such a nuanced experience. You'll never experience the kind of high you do in a MOBA that you do in anything like anything else. Yeah. But you'll never experience the kind of low, that kind of self-loathing that you do. How about the worst when when you tell someone you've played such and such hours of Dota and and it's an absurd number and then they're like, well, you must be really good. No, I'm (laughs) awful. No, I'm I'm dog shit after 3,000 hours. (laughs) Yeah, I'm in the middle of the road. I have a 50% win rate and that's never... Ever, ever gonna change <laughs> period but like and then a heroes of the storm comes out right yeah and i've never played that game okay i've never played league of legends mm-hmm. i've never played heroes of the storm i played haunt i played heroes of new earth for a little bit garbage i liked heroes of new earth that's a different topic Moving but I, on. I, yeah i liked it well, it's very um, close to dota yeah it's very close um to me if i was ever to play a moba for a long time and i have it's Dota 2. Yeah. I would say Dota 2. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. simple as that. I would say Dota 2 is by far the best MOBA to play. Yeah. And I think even though Valve owns it, it's fair to mention Dota this much because Blizzard created Dota. Yeah. Blizzard now, allowed yeah. for users to yeah. create Dota. Yeah. And so, Heroes of the Storm, to me, based on, it, like, or back to exactly what you guys were saying, that, that Blizzard themselves streamlines mm-hmm. almost everything now. Heroes of the Storm is such a streamlined game compared to Dota 2. Even I felt compared the same to, way. Even yeah. compared to League of Legends. But you know what, man? You and know, League of Legends is like casual as fuck, dude. Like, you know what? I, it's, I just feel like people who, who have played Dota a great amount, it's just they're kind of... You can't convert them to Heroes of the Storm, you know? You can. It's, it's hard. Well, Not, I mean, convert people, them maybe. in the sense that... Heroes of the Storm becomes like your main mobile. No, it no, can't. No, so like I, I play Heroes of the Storm like every once in a while. Like I still play it. Right there. Right there. Exactly. Every once in a while. Yeah. Those exact words yeah. describe so many Blizzard games, in yeah. my opinion, nowadays. And Heroes of the Storm is probably the biggest one that it describes. Mm. Like probably. I, I mean, it's not completely out yet, is it? Is it oh, like yeah, full no, no, release? No, it's oh, it's full release? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought it was still in beta. No. Um, I mean, holy shit, dude. Like... That entire game is just like the definition of every once in a while. Yeah. It's not a no. main game. Well, to play. no, to be fair, like I know a lot of people that made that game. Okay. Yeah. That's, no, I really do. That, yeah. They're probably that, weird. That I man. don't understand. Yeah. That no, I don't understand. I don't but, get it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. I haven't played it. I've seen it played and it looks boring as shit. No, it could be pretty fun. Especially when, again, dude, it's it's a team game. Like if you're on 
voice chat with like a whole bunch of friends and you're playing it's it's yeah, fun. dude, but if I'm yeah. in a dumpster with a bunch of my friends, I'm sure we could find some fun in it. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean anything to me, dude. It's got to be a good game. That's fair. I fair don't enough. know. Maher, you wanted to say something, right? No, man. I, I was just going to say, listen, I am by no means a good Dota player. <laughs> but after you play Dota for so long, I'm kind of repeating what I said, but it's just I want to nail in that point. Yeah. I just feel like, again, it's a testament to the direction that they're going now that they've created a game and expected people to jump onto it, you know? I mean, they, they're too smart. They can't possibly expect to convert Dota players, mm. you know? That's not what they're trying to do. I don't think that's what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to, like, get people who just don't play MOBAs at all to play a MOBA. Yeah. And have it it's be their MOBA. It's a very different kind of MOBA, man. Like, that's the thing. Like, like you're saying, it's streamlined. Your entire level, your entire team levels up together. Yeah, yeah. There's no gold. You don't buy anything. There's no items, right? There's no, no items. Yeah, what the hell? Dude, you know what? Yeah. I'm it's, sorry, but like, what? Dude, yeah. you know items? Right. How is it enjoyable? The items make the game. No, you choose your skills, though. You choose like what? every every few levels, you can upgrade your skills. Okay, and sure. And so you, you have a, like, for example, at level three, you have four options. Like, are you going to make your Q stronger, your W stronger, whatever, like a whole bunch of different things. You choose. You choose one. And it significantly changes how your hero plays. Like that's the fun of it, man. It's so, different. It's it's different. You're, you're saying things to me that just simply yeah, do not compute <laughs> in in my mind. I'm sorry, dude. You know, it's it just makes perfect sense to me. It makes perfect sense. It's the same reason why somebody who let's say played the card game Magic for years, yeah. like a hard game hardcore Magic player, can't like if someone just said, "Hey, man, check out this card game online. It's called Hearthstone. Yeah. You should play it." They would sit down and think, is everyone who plays this just stupid? <laughs> you know? Like, it's... it's I didn't are, even play are you guys dumb? You get a mana every turn? Every, like, what? What is this dumb shit, you know? I didn't even play Magic, dude. And I thought that at first. No, I mean, th like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know? Try to think about it from that perspective. Like, someone who plays Magic plays Hearthstone and thinks it's dumb. Yeah. I think it's the same with Dota. Someone who sure. plays Dota would play Heroes of the Storm and for the same reasons think that it's an ina inadequate game. When in reality, as a standalone game, it's probably pretty excellent, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's probably yeah, well right. made. It's probably well made. That's that's how I felt. It's I, just in comparison that it lacks. Exactly. I feel like. Exactly. The first time I played Heroes of the Storm, I, I just straight up immediately felt like I was superior to everyone in that game. <laughs> like, nice. what are you scrubs doing playing this game? I'm just going to hop back into Dota and do some complex stuff. Yeah. <laughs> However, know? I will say, dude, Heroes of the Storm added like this hero, Cho'Gall. Oh, yeah. That you control with two people. Two people have to control this one hero. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That is is innovative as fuck for yeah. the genre, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, that's a cool concept. And number three, is it good? <laughs> like, is, <laughs> it, is he good? Is he a good hero? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's a fucking beast. Is he? If you yeah. get good, uh, a good pair, right? Yeah. No, no like, obviously it's 4v5 need... otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, the... there's two people in one hero. Like, one person moves the guy around and has its own skill set, and the other guy is, like, a mage, but is... You know, like, doesn't control where he moves. See, I don't know if Dota, Dota 2, if Valve would have the balls to add that hero. I don't no. know if that if they would I ever feel have like that. The, uh, have I that feel like the community hero. would just reject it. I don't know if they'd like, need to, would, man. Yeah. That I, well, need is... You a, see what I... Well, you know yeah, what? Yeah, you know, bro, need is, like, a big word right now. Actually, that, that brings up another interesting point. I mean, they have a lot of freedom to do that, I feel like, Heroes of the Storm, you know? Like, we just said that the Dota community rejected it. That's because the Dota community at this point, like, everything is so fucking good in that game and they're on top of like making the changes you know the meta changing updating buffing nerfing yeah. you know they they wouldn't have the freedom to maybe be that innovative you're right if and they, he yeah. heroes of the storm is so casual that they could do whatever <laughs> the fuck they want and and try it out yeah and try it out and Dude, it turns out it's something super innovative chogal started as an april fool's joke by blizzard oh really yeah he was a april fool's joke the same as like i don't know if you guys remember back in the fucking day dude they they the said that, that they were gonna add a bard yeah to world of warcraft and like <laughs> you could play with like a guitar and like he does like this crazy shit if like you do your guitar hero uh like uh controls or whatever they never added that but like it started chogal as a hero in heroes of the storm started as that an april fool's joke that's pretty cool. and they added it like you're right 100 percent, that they can do whatever they want and people will lap it up 
Because that's their audience. Not even. I mean, maybe they won't even lap it up. But they maybe it's it will so be casual. Bad. They'll but, accept it. But if they're bad, if it's bad, then top like whatever. You yeah. know, like they'll just get rid of it, and like people wouldn't be outraged. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> people, like people wouldn't be burning down homes like in Dota two if they fuck if they made oh, some dude. dumbass hero yeah. in Dota two and just inserted it. People people would be like. Dude, what have you done? Dude, Dota, <laughs> I'm gonna the, kill you. The Dota community is so toxic that if they have like a typo in the in like a hero's oh, description, yeah. unplayable just game is unplayable. Fit. Yeah, they'll just throw a fit. <laughs> it's it's dumb. It's absolutely dumb. I don't I, know. How I actually hate. love the Dota community, man. Like it cracks me up. It's it cracks funny. Me. Oh, dude, if you're they're funny, they're ruthless, though, yeah. dude. If it's you look ruthless. at it in the meta sense, yeah, it's hilarious. But honestly, if you ever go to the subreddit like Dota Two, it's a it's a cesspool, yeah. dude. It's a, it's a straight up cesspool. So I don't know, like. In general, the whole casualization doesn't really appeal to me. And you're exactly right in my head. Like, if I was a Magic player and I went to Hearthstone, I would say, like, oh, <laughs> why are people just playing a <laughs> dumbass game, dude? Why are people, like, wasting their time and their money? But, you know, I guess if someone's new to MOBAs and they're new to the genre, even though Heroes of the Storm isn't representative of other MOBAs, it streamlines it and makes it accessible to everybody. Yeah. And that's about all Blizzard's about now, I guess. Like Hearthstone, uh, Overwatch, um, and Heroes of the Storm is just... And even the, the recent World of Warcraft expansions, they're just consistently yeah. breaking the entire systems that they made when they were a young company down. And you know what? This makes me think, you know, such a big company, such a big, truly successful company like Blizzard taking this philosophical change, you yeah. know, like doing this. That is probably indicative of just gaming as a whole, kind yeah, of, kind of moving in a certain mm. direction. And I know that's a very broad term, but I was just thinking to myself, you know, people are probably playing video games now, just generally more than ever before. Sure. Yeah. I truly think that. Yeah. You know, like it just felt like you know when I was fourteen or fifteen, and you were talking to your friends about who's playing a game. It wasn't always like such a wide pool of people. Yeah. Now you can, like, it'll be totally normal for me to ask somebody, do you play this? Do you play that? And yeah. it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a surprise if they said yes. It's no longer a niche thing anymore. Like gaming is, yeah, it's big. It's, it's, it's becoming larger and larger and it's, it's just a part more of the culture people. now. Yeah, like, no, for sure. I mean, video games make more than movies and they cost more and they're yep. marketed more. Yep. And, and it's just a new kind of expression, art form, medium, entertainment, whatever hell the word you want to really call it. But Man, that's a super interesting point, man, that like that's the way gaming is going. And I think I could even take it further and say that that's the way gamers want it. And that's a very, in my I mean, mind... I mean, who wouldn't, who wouldn't yeah. want something to I be don't. easier to get into? I, dude. I know you don't. It's super, like, that's what I was about to say. Like, it's super depressing, dude. It's absolutely depressing it's, to me. It's a mixed that that's bag. what people want. It's a mixed bag, man. It's a mixed bag. I'm by no means a hardcore gamer, but holy shit, like there are some things that are just getting so easy to get into. Like there are some games that just skip the combat for you if you fail too many times. Huh. In game, like in RPGs and stuff. I, I, I just can't get behind that. I cannot get behind that kind of streamlining. Well, it's happening. I know, dude. I'm just like a minority <laughs> now, I guess. I, but yeah. like, no, man. You know, this, this is the way I see it, you know? This this change is happening and things are becoming easier and easier to digest, easier and easier to get into. And it doesn't necessarily have to end like that way as well. Yeah. It doesn't have to keep getting simpler and simpler. Okay. I think that this might just be a way for people to just be hooked into the idea of gaming. And then the responsibility is on the developers to still keep coming up with games that are complex, which are then like the second step can be made. You know, you say that, dude, you say that the responsibility is on the developers, but it's not the responsibility and not even the responsibility. The job is on the publisher. So Blizzard is making these casual games and we could argue to death about what's going on in their games. We could argue to death about like, oh, I, I like their past games or I don't like their past games. Now it's easier. But sure. But the fact is, at a certain point in their timeline as a company, they were bought out by Activision. Yeah. And so now it's Activision Blizzard and Activision is making is the publisher and they're making choices for how these games are marketed, built and distributed. Hmm. That's interesting. So the, the the responsibility for hooking people is not on the developer. It's on the publisher. And if the publisher thinks they can make your money by making casual as fuck games, hmm. then the developer does not need to go the extra mile. 
So that's why I am upset by that's it. That's true. That's why I'm but, depressed. So, so then the question becomes: Do you think that the publisher is ever gonna like come to a point where they'll think, "Well, now we have all these people hooked. Let's just like there's an evolution, right? There's gonna be an evolution. Certain publishers. Let's make it a little more complex. Hey, man, Certain as long as yeah. it makes money, why change? You know. You know I what? Guess. But certain publishers really stick to their niche, like Paradox. You know, sure. Paradox, they do all those 4X games like yeah. the Euro- Europa Universalis and whatever else. Yeah. I don't know. But like they do those and they also branch out into like Mountain Blade and they also branch out into other RPGs and stuff. And those games aren't exactly simple and they're niche, but those are decisions made by that publisher. So yes, there are going to be examples in the industry of people and publishers and companies who go the extra mile for their gamers that really want a little bit more of a immersive, hardcore, difficult, yeah. whatever word, experience. But the mainstream is going to be always dominated by the mainstream. That's it. That's how it goes. And to me as a gamer, Blizzard is the prime example of that. And that's why as a company, like I, like you were saying earlier, Mahed, like you can't call yourself a fanboy of them. I was never a fanboy. And even now, like I'll criticize them to hell simply because they set a very certain kind of precedent towards that casualization that I hate, dude. Hmm. That I absolutely hate it. I hate it. Even if their games That's are understandable. great. understandable. Yeah, even if their games are great. I, just not my, like, just not my thing. Sure. Yeah. Not, not, that, I want, not that I want to drag the topic down, boys, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, I kind of ended it on that note. But, no, no. I mean, mm. there, there are people, many people like you. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm somewhere in the middle, I think, you know. I I I appreciate that they're they're trying. I mean, maybe it's not as, you know, noble as they're trying to get people to play video games. Like I guess I'm kind of viewing it that way, maybe naively, like they're, <laughs> they're trying to make money. They're I mean, yeah, they're trying yeah. to make money. Yeah. They're trying to make money. But I I don't know if that's the end of it, you know. I I don't I don't think that maybe it's just going to end. It's just going to keep getting more and more streamlined. I think that maybe this is just a hook and once enough people are hooked, then maybe they could take more liberties, Hmm. you know? That's why I say it's an evolution. Like it started super hardcore, Diablo 2 hardcore, Starcraft hardcore, World of Warcraft pretty hardcore, Mm -hmm. and then now super streamlined. And then I guess eventually, probably it's going to go back to a little bit more hardcore, you know? When people are not satisfied with how simple everything is. I remember when I had to work for my mount in in World of Warcraft. <laughs> I, know, I had to man. work for it. I had to work like my ass off for that mount, dude. I had to work for it and I had to really like put in like time like and effort Griffin. and stuff. No, your regular mount. Are you, that question itself is casual as fuck in my head. <laughs> my, oh yeah, you had to work for your flying griffin? Dude, no, I I'm had the, to work for my horse, dude. Uh, dude, I'm the embodiment of casual like, bullshit. Uh, like, and now you just get your mount like at 20 for like one gold, which is nothing. Yep. Like, yeah, it's, no, they oh, basically give it for free. God, yeah, dude, no. As a paladin, you have to go through this epic, huge quest line and finally like you can summon your horse. And now... Dude, it feels so good. Now you literally just so good. have it granted to you. Yeah. And that's... A blizzard that in, disgusts you huh that's blizzard in a nutshell either you pay for what you want yeah or you're just giving it and then you know take our very stripped down mechanics for our game and enjoy it yeah Ha-ha. i mean they're cool games man but just not my cup of tea always sure. really i guess if i have to end on a note it's just that as i said before i just respect them immensely yeah. for for the treasures that they've given us yeah well, for sure just like frozen throne like to me frozen throne is a treasure i agree what it has produced was a treasure you know yeah. no man like they've done so much just for video gaming in general like how big of a thing was world of warcraft how big of a thing was starcraft you know they defined they yeah. defined a lot of games after the fact and yeah. even still now they define almost every mmo is a wow clone yep you know what i mean almost every arpg is a diablo yep. clone like that's yep. just how it works yeah. that's just how it is yes i respect them and i respect the fact as i said before they know their demographic but i just can't get behind it all the time you know what i mean i just can't sit there and say yeah i'll buy their shit like i i told you guys in the previous podcast i'm playing hearthstone and and Mahad, I enjoy it more now than I did in the beginning, but I'm still not going to pay a single cent. And don't. I, I will not. But you I can will have not. it all, man. I'm not going to have it all. I don't care. <laughs> I have way better games to play than Hearthstone. I'm not going to pay a penny. It's cool. 
But that's it. That's where the conversation ends for me. It's cool. Period. That's it. Fair enough. Can yeah. I have all those cards? <laughs> <laughs> all those cards, man. You I can have all those decks, them. man. <laughs> gotta have oh, them man. all. Oh, boy. All right. Well, uh, guys, we have a few emails. Oh. How about that? Man. Who the fuck is emailing us again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Never so, let us rest, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so um, our first email is from Sudan. And he Sudan. Asks, uh, What's up, oh, guys? What's his email? Just Sudan? <laughs> yeah, just Sudan. <laughs> At Gmail? Uh, I didn't pull his email, but yeah. That's a letdown. Oh, man. Dude, Dude, you know what? No, tell, man, it's professional, man. Tell him tell him to get on the ball. Make, a, right. make, a, create, make a cool email, man. <laughs> FlamingNutsack99 at gmail.com. Okay. <laughs> FlamingNutsack99 at gmail.com asks, <laughs> What's up, guys? What, in your opinion, is an acceptable substitute for realistic graphics? A cool thing I've noticed in indie games that they tend to turn the problem of not having enough resources and manpower into an opportunity to give the game a unique yet not so fancy looking aesthetic so yeah it's a great question yeah so the most immediate things that come to mind are the two games that come to mind the most are minecraft Mm -hmm. and terraria sure to me terraria is better than minecraft which i know is is no probably a debate yeah exactly i mean (laughs) you have a different opinion but um terraria is just a 2d sprite game and yet it's so rich with content. It's so rich with different things that they can do and they, they continue to do. They add on to it every couple of months like yeah. with a completely new experience. Like if I played Minecr- or uh, uh, Terraria now as opposed to two years ago, a completely different game. Mm. And that's simply because the code is so easy, I think, and because the graphics are very easy to manipulate because it's just sprite. And that's it, you know? Like, I mean, you don't yeah. need great graphics in a game. Yeah, man, like, when he's saying, like, a acceptable substitute for realistic graphics, like, realistic graphics, like, I don't think that's what video games are aiming for, like, and I, I don't think that's what they should be aiming for. Well... You know, like, if you nail a good aesthetic, not necessarily, like, realistic graphics, yeah. then you'll have a good-looking game. Like, there's a lot of... Let's take Mario games, for example, right? Like, they look beautiful, not because of good graphics. They don't have good graphics. They have a good aesthetic. They have, like, a yeah. good art style that they stick by. I love exactly. Mario That's where the art comes in. Yeah. Like, Yoshi's Woolly World. I yeah, man, that dude, that game. That is so quaint Holy and shit. cute and charming. Like, I just, I, it's so cute. It's so absolutely <laughs> so cute. cute. <laughs> but but it's straight up, like, I, you, had, you were telling me earlier that, or, like, uh, the other day when we were playing, it seems like it offers nothing to the platforming genre. I just thought it looked generic. Yeah, but it's not because it's so cute <laughs> that's it like it's just very cute it's a cute game you yeah. know and it doesn't need to be anything else really fair enough yeah, yeah like as long as you stick to like a specific art style then and yeah like, you, you don't know, need good graphics todd howard had this todd howard who's like the lead creator at uh bethesda games yep. he uh i remember uh i bought the oblivion magazine like the game informer magazine that announced oblivion <laughs> And I remember a specific quote in there, not the exact quote, but him saying it. He said that the closer and closer we get to photorealistic graphics in games, the farther we want to stray away from it. Mm. And I take that to heart. Yeah. I take that to complete heart that the the more you can do that in technology, the less you want to employ it because the game itself will speak for itself in gameplay, in aesthetic, in, sure. in, just in, in everything, really. It doesn't need to be realistic as hell. It can be what it is and we can enjoy it for that. So there yeah. is no substitute. Yeah. Just the game itself. Yeah. <laughs> well said. Thank you for the question, Sudan. Thanks, Sudan. Yeah, no, that was cool. Uh, what was the email? I thought it was Flat oh, Flaming Nutsack 99. Yeah, flaming, oh, yeah, flaming yeah. Nutsack, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, our second email uh, is from Video James. Oh, man, this guy. This guy. This Loyal guy listener. Persistent. Yeah. Uh, in all caps, it says, Every villain is lemons. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then <laughs> that's under that, I don't know <laughs> that's a SpongeBob thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, under that, in quotes, it says, "Open for interpretation." What would you say is the Coors Light of video games? <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> oh god! All right, Duke Nukem. Okay. Well I don't. I don't think that at well all. Well said. <laughs> I don't think that's, that that is my oh, that is 100%. my percent that is my answer one hundred percent and I will say nothing else. Duke Nukem <laughs> is the cores of fucking video games. That is it. That Damn, is it, dude. Wow. <laughs> that's such a rough question because to me, like I think in almost every podcast, I've just likened cores light and cores to piss. <laughs> so what game is like piss? 
Duke Nukem. You, I don't think Duke Nukem is that bad, man. Is Duke Nukem's Duke you Nukem? You can piss in Duke Nukem. <laughs> yeah, you can. Oh, I'm oh. sure you can. Yeah. Um. Fuck me, dude. I, I like. I just to be face- like not facetious, but just to be like a, a piece of shit asshole. I want to say Battlefront is the Coors Light. Wow. <laughs> I want to say Battlefront. The specific this one, this oh, that, recent one. That's is a, a dig, John. No, I know no. that's a, a real dig. That's a nasty dig. I'm not gonna say it though. I'm gonna. Post, <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna say it simply because simply because I think it's too much. There's too much in that envelope, dude. I don't want to open it. Well, then what would you say? I don't know. That's such a t- like. What game is like pissed to me? What game do I just like loathe and I never want to try? I don't know, man. That's fucked up. That's, that's funny, man. Like I, I don't associate Coors Light as bad. Like because I like, you like Coors, Coors Light. Light. Yeah, yeah I know. It's it's a pleasant thing to drink. So like for me, what's something that I like every once in a while I like to drink? Like like to chill out. Maybe Hearthstone. You know what, dude? I'll agree with you. Hearthstone. <laughs> like, the, I don't the, mean it as a bad thing because Coors Life for me is not bad. No, but see, yeah, I mean it's it all as a context. But yeah. see, the thing is, I mean it as a bad thing and I still agree with you. <laughs> I think it's the here. Coors Light. I think it's the Coors Light of gaming. As, dude, honestly, this is such a great question that I want to think about it and come back to it next week, at least sure. for myself. But for now, I'll agree with you. I mean, I'd say... Uh, Hearthstone is the Coors Light. I don't think that. I stand Duke, by my answer. I don't think no. a Duke Nukem is so Duke random. Duke Nukem is a great answer, dude. No, 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 <laughs> Duke Nukem is it. very good. I don't know. All right, well, I mean that. That's all I got, dude. I gotta think about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was a funny fuck question. Yeah. Man. Shit. Thank you, video James. That was that, that was, was great. great. Yeah. Like no, it. I have to, I have to ruminate. I have to yeah. ruminate. Keep them mm. coming. <laughs> Punch right, one two, dude. I think I think that does it for us. Yeah. So um. If you guys have any more questions for us, please send it over to mail at the next and we'll answer it next week. Cool. Thanks, guys. Good night. Take it easy. <laughs>